today over the worship team, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing, a fresh anointing upon Minister Tyrus, Lord, upon the, uh, the worship team today, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that this shall be a house of praise and worship, that we shall give you glory and honor, Lord God. We shall lift up holy hands, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that your word declares that without holiness, you said, no man shall see the Lord. And so, God, we thank you for holy hands today. We lift up holy hands today, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God. We praise you, O oh God. We love you, O oh God. We honor you, O oh God. And we thank you for your loving kindness, Lord, which you said is better than life. Yet you said our lips shall praise you this morning. So we shall praise you this morning, Lord. We shall humble ourselves before you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, that you are glorious, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you are our Father, God. You, we can cry out, Abba, Father, Lord, because you are our Daddy, God, and we can run to you, O oh God. You said, ask and it shall be given, Lord. You said, the seeking we shall find. And you said, knock and the door shall be open, O oh God. And so, God, we're come seeking you this morning. We come knocking on the door this morning, O oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, because you are our Father God. You are soon coming King. And we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord God, in 2019, Lord, this shall be a place, a Pentecostal experience that we shall experience, Lord God. You even in a greater way, Father, in a greater dimension, O oh God, that we may see your glory manifested in this place, that this place shall be a hospital, Lord God, for the sick, O oh God, for those that need to be healed and set free by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And so we thank you and we praise you for that, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you glory this morning. We said hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We said hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We said hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So you are glorious, Lord. And we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Amen. Do you love the Lord this morning? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Has he been good to you? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God, you're good all the time and all the time. He is good. He's an everlasting God. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, we just say, the Lord is my light, salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light, salvation. Whom shall I be? Whom shall I be afraid? Cause I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust. The Lord, the the Lord is my life, salvation. Who shall I be? Yes. Who shall I be afraid? Come on, say the Lord. The Lord is my life, salvation. Who shall I be? Oh. Who shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Hallelujah. I will trust. I will trust in you. Nobody else but you, God. I will trust in you. Listen to this part right here. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Can you say that? I will remain so confident. I will see the goodness of the
this, I will see the goodness of the you're saying I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Anybody gonna remain so confident in I will God a good God will you remain confident throughout the week that you will see the goodness of the Lord no matter the circumstances no matter what they say no matter what it looks like no matter what it feels like I'm still going to remain confident that we will see the goodness of the Lord hallelujah 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 father we adore you this morning we adore your son, Jesus, who died upon the cross for our sins. And during this season, Father, we know that he's a little baby in a manger. But more importantly, he is our Savior. He come to change the world. He come to heal the world. Save the lost. And Father, we thank you that we can adore you. We can worship you in spirit and in truth. So, oh, come let us adore him, for he is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can we adore him this morning? Can we tell him how lovely he is? Can we tell him how great he is? How wonderful a counselor that he is? Oh, come let us adore him. Let's worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, for he is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah.
the Lord this morning can we just shout how we adore you Lord we adore you Lord this season we adore you hallelujah we adore you we adore you we adore you come on say it we adore
Come on, let's give him praise. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him a shout right now that we may adore the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Happy birthday, Jesus. Happy birthday, my Savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we adore you this morning because you've been so good to us. We adore you. We adore you. Yeah. He has a reason to be adored. We adore you. Christ my Savior. We adore you. Oh, oh. We adore you. Jesus. We adore. We adore you. We adore. We adore. Hallelujah. We adore Christ the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you can in the name of Jesus. Seasons Greetings International Praise. The 2019 prayer and fasting begins January the 2nd. This year you have the option of doing the 21-day Daniel fast or the 40-day fast. Visit the Connect Center and pick up an information package. Attention parents, Winter Retreat, Winter Fest, and Kids Fest is coming up soon. The time is now to register and place your deposits for these awesome events for our youth and children. Winter Retreat is February the 1st through the 3rd in Malden, South Carolina. Winter Fest is March the 8th through the 10th in Knoxville, Tennessee. And Kids Fest is April the 12th through the 14th in Charlotte, North Carolina. Please see Pastor Donna, Pastor Chris, or visit us in the Connect Center for more information. IPCOG Biggest Loser Contest begins January the 6th. See Miss Mary Jackson for more information. Good news. We thank God for opening doors for the Good News Club to share the good news at a Richland 2 Elementary School. We are seeking dedicated and committed leaders to help join us on this great opportunity to love God, love others, and reach the world. See Pastor Donna or Sister Linda Glover for more information. Host an international student from one of the universities in your home on Christmas Day. Contact Amy Liberty at 803-799-3452 or visit ifmusa.org. Adopt a soldier for the holidays. See Pastor Banks or fill out an information form online or in the Connect Center. An information meeting for the Mobilized Local Leadership Development course will be next Sunday on December the 23rd after second service in the chapel. Sign up online or in the Connect Center. Connect and get involved by volunteering in the ministry and becoming a part of a life group. Come in January the 13th, 2019, the Connect meeting. Join us for word and prayer on Saturdays at 8 a.m. And as always, love God, love others, and reach the world. Amen. Let's give God praise in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Why don't you stand with me all over the house, and this is what I want us to do, if you don't mind. Just kind of look around at all the ugly sweaters. And um, if you don't mind, if you, if you think someone in your area has the ugliest sweater on, would you, would you raise their hand and nominate them if they've got the ugliest sweater on? I've got one right here. Brother Mike, come on up here if you don't mind. Come on up, Brother Mike. Amen. Come on up here, Brother Joe. Come on up, Brother Joe. Brother Rob, come on out. 
Brother Rob, come on out. Brother Burroughs. Oh, my goodness. My, my mother-in-law has um, got an ugly sweater. <laughs> she even got a top hat on. I don't know. But come on over here, sis, uh, Sister Letty. <laughs> Amen. My goodness gracious. Any, anybody else been nominated? <laughs> come on up. All right. We're going to do this real quick. For those of you, for those of you, First Lady's isn't ugly. Hers isn't ugly. There, oh, there you go. There you go. Come on up. Today's Ugly Sweater Sunday, if you will. Now, guys, this is way out of my comfort zone. I even have a pouch I can put my Bible in right there in the front. Amen. So, um, this is a Walmart special. Me and, uh, well, the Flippos were there late last, well, really not late. Amen. And we were looking for a sweater because I didn't have one. I told the early congregation, I said, um, I looked for a Clemson sweater, but I couldn't find one without a hood. <laughs> Come on, Gamecocks. Anybody Gamecocks in the house? <laughs> anyway. And see, one of you would have gotten a Clemson sweater because I would have wore it one time and I would have given it to you as a gift. Amen. But now I'm not booing anymore, right? All right. So we're going to start to the left and go to the right if you don't mind. We didn't have time to do this in the first service. So, all right. So y'all look real quick. Get your favorite. Whatever, which one's the ugliest, if you will. Now, how many of yours was homemade? You made it. All right. I think that's extra points if you homemade it. All right. Mm, but... Lady, that's, that's pretty ugly. <laughs> I mean, I have to say. <laughs> All right, so here we go. All right, going to start right here. If, you, if this is your favorite ugly shirt, sweater, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> All right. Either, either yours is the ugliest or you're just number one. One, I don't know. Amen. All right, that, I don't think that's ugly. No, that's not ugly. That's pretty. You need to market that one. I yeah, you come on down. You, you're, you're off. All right. Please don't fall. All right. Here we go. We've got a, um, a Meowie Christmas. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> Sister, I, I don't. That's not ugly. That's not ugly. That's, that, amen. That's not ugly. His was corny, but yours was pretty. <laughs> Amen. And his says, did you make this? Y'all made this. Sister Burroughs, you made that? Hold on. Wait a minute. We got to see it. It says, trust me, I am unicorny. Too ugly to repeat. <laughs> All right. All right. Here we go. You still got, he still got it. Go, go ahead and go, you can go ahead and go down, Brother Burroughs. All right, now this is homemade. This has got bulbs on it. It's got, it's got a, um, a pitcher hanger hook right there. Amen. Washers, wire nuts. You thought it was what? A needle. Oh, it's, no, that's, that's one of those things you put in sheetrock, Brother Joe. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, all right, here we go. You're pretty, he still got it, but, but stay up here because we're going to have a runoff here in just a second. All right, Mr. Joe in his um, Christmas jacket. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Hey, you got to up the ante next year. You got to put on some green pants and red or amen something, brother. Big mustache or something. Now, this one's homemade for sure. Did your, did your wife do this for you? You did it all by yourself. All right, you get some extra points for that one. But how, let me get out of the way. How about Brother Mike Hughes? All right, you're pretty close, too. Get over there. All right, now, guys, this is my mother-in-law. So y'all really let her have it, okay? I'm, I'm sorry. Y'all please be nice to her. I'm only kidding. But anyway, she's always like dogs. But anyway, this is a what? This is what? Oh, that's the bulldog that she is, and I, I'll vouch for that, if you will. All right. So how about Letty? 
Not bad. Stay right there. I'm gonna let you. I'm, I'm gonna let you. All right, this one's homemade, right? <laughs> All right. So Christmas tree with the tassels behind it, and got some Christmas, and even some bracelets. Amen. As a designer, right? What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, journal. I'm gonna go to college for journalism. She's gonna go to college for journalism. All right. So. How about this one? All right, I think you're still in the run, and we we, we got to, all right. Did you, okay, so she's got one to, did you do it that way, or did you buy it that way? All right, so she bought it that way, up and down. It changes sceneries. Let there be, pe oh, pizza. That's unique. I'll give it that. All right, how about it? Okay. Didn't make the cut today. <laughs> Get it? Pizza. I'm Pastor Joke. <laughs> Come this way. All right. You made this one for sure. You didn't. It came from the store like that. <laughs> How much did you pay for it? I don't know. You don't remember? Did your mama buy it? Somebody else. Somebody else brought it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> mm. All right, guys. All right, here we go. <laughs> it was an ugly Christmas sweater, isn't it? Brother Phil, who nominated you? Gary, Gary nominated <laughs> But he wore this a few weeks ago. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Amen. All right, here we go, Brother Phil. All right, you're going down? All right. All right, you buy it this way or you? Okay. All right, here we go. I got to hurry up, guys. I'm taking too much of the evangelist's time. Y'all ready? Here we go. They didn't, they didn't say it was ugly enough. So that's a compliment. All right, Miss Lynn, you bought it this way, right? You got two sets of legs. <laughs> and you grew some things up there. Things we'll do at church. <laughs> All right, here we go, Lynn. Should, should she stay up here as a runoff or no? No, okay, they said no. All right. Now, you made that. All right. So the eyes is right here, lips, and, and what now? You got a beard. Right, but down here is the... I got you. Okay, I got you. All right, guys. It's, remember, this is an ugly it's sweater contest. I knew I felt something behind me. <laughs> Come on up, brother. All right, so we got the Meowy Christmas with a Clemson add-on. <laughs> All right, brother. I think you might have got some more hits without the hat. That's your, where's your people? There's some people right there and back there, too. Amen. Amen. All right. So he, they said no. They said no. <laughs> All right, you guys come to the center, if you don't mind, real quick. I got to make this happen. I know somebody watching on live stream that just signed on. They said, man, those people, what are they doing at church? All right, so real quick. That's not ugly. That's, that's not ugly. Joy, dream, jolly, wish, believe. All right. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a trumpet sister because that's not ugly. That's, 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 that's pretty. All right. That's something you'd wear to church. Amen. But anyway, so anyway, we'll do it anyway, everybody. Okay. It's too pretty to be ugly, right? Okay. All right. Thank you, Sister Nettles. 
All right, here we go, real quick, all right? Man. You got pretty good. All right. Brother Rob, I think you've got the ugliest. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, it's good. What happened? I was trying to think of a song to go with that, but I couldn't think of one right off the top of my head. Amen. Listen, it's, it's, uh, sometimes you just got to have fun, right? Amen. And I've seen a lot of different smiles um, going on around about the, the – so next year, this was, this was Minister Goodwin's idea, amen. I told him his was, his was pretty. No, it was your idea, amen. So doesn't the, doesn't the praise team look good, amen? All right, let me welcome our guests with us this morning, Elder James and Sister um, Devana Peel. Where are you guys? Would you just raise your hand? Amen. Where are you? Amen. Would you give them a good international praise? Welcome. Okay, and uh, Shawnee Faith. We're Shawnee Faith. Amen. Good to have Shawnee with us this morning. Brother Roger's sister, first time here with us. Amen. And then also Margie Bennett. Where's Margie? Margie Bennett. Would you raise your hand? Margie Bennett. Good to have Margie with us today. Amen. Listen, I want to introduce our guest speaker this morning because he'll be the next voice that you'll hear. Um, I've known um, Andrew Filippo for over 20 years, and you're 20, 28. Amen. So I've watched him grow up. He comes from good stock. His, his dad is an awesome man of God. He serves with me on the state council. He's... Um, and he's an awesome pastor. His dad was an evangelist as well. And um, just awesome family. His, his brother's in ministry. He's in ministry. And he's 28 years of age. Amen. And started when you were uh, about 23, 24. And so he's been evangelizing for almost five years now. He preaches about 150 to 170 services a year. Amen. Just recently, almost three years ago, April the 2nd. Amen. Um, got married to his beautiful wife, Brittany. He may say a little bit more about that. Would you give them a good international praise welcome? Amen. You ready to give this morning? Say amen. I want to remind you on, De on December 30th, one service, 1030 uh, in the morning. Amen. New members breakfast. If you've not received the right hand of fellowship, you're invited to the new member's breakfast. Please call the office. Let us know that you're coming so that we can get a good count and be good stewards of the food, if you will. But if you just recently became a member and haven't received the right hand of fellowship, you're invited. You should have gotten a letter in the mail. If you have not, please call the office, talk to Sister Linda, and she'll make sure that she gives you, gets you an invite. All right? Here we go. Let's start confession at offer time. As we give today in our offerings, we're believing the Lord for jobs or better jobs, benefits, raises, and bonuses, sales and commission, settlements of estates and inheritances, rebates and returns, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, witch inventions, an entrepreneurial spirit for the advancement of the kingdom and blessings for our families. It's, it's offering, offering time. time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give to man from the Father would change us all in ways we never seen. Yet his first moment were in the manger. Soon every little 
living thing would call him king. Though we didn't know it then, we soon would understand that his life would reveal God's perfect plan. Oh, he is not just a man.
The steps that I took, I give him glory for him because he is God. He is God. He is God. If you need healing in your body, stand and proclaim who he is. He is God. He is God. He's God. He's God. He's God all by himself. He is God. Oh, I love to give him glory for who he is. He's God. He is God. On Monday and Tuesday, when I almost lost my mind, He is God. He is God. Oh, who can do me like Him? No oh, come on, let's worship Him this morning, church. He is God. I said, let's worship Him this morning, church. him in this place. He is God. He is God. He's your God this morning. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He is God. Oh, his name is Oh, Jesus. just let him move in your life this morning. He is God. Worship the Lord this morning. Oh, yes. Bless the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. This is the day that the Lord hath made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. I let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything. I let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good God Almighty, I'll feel him in this place. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful he's God this morning? That was a little pitiful. Aren't you thankful he's God this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you will, quickly grab your Bibles. Remain standing, please. Just continuing in this atmosphere of worship. Just quickly turn to Mark chapter 10. He is God. He is God. Hallelujah. It is truly a joy and honor to be here at this great church phenomenal church on the front runner of so many things in this movement such a blessing to be here and of course to be with your great leadership the bishop and first lady of the house are excellent people 
such a joy to be with them. Such a joy. He has done so many great things by the power of the Lord. He has proven himself time and time again. And I told the first service that it's, I always get a little nervous when I stand behind the pulpit of someone who was a great evangelist, as your pastor was. But he is truly a man of God, very respected in this state, just reelected back in October back to the state council, which is our highest elected board. So it is truly an honor to be here today. Bishop, to stand behind your sacred desk. And, of course, I know she's going around shaking hands like a good first lady does, but also to be with the wonderful first lady, great woman of God, who so many ministers' wives look to as mine does. And she has proven herself time and time again, serving several times on the women's board for the state. So it's just an honor to be with you all today. Thank you for opening your doors and letting me be here. But I would be amiss if I didn't recognize the most important person in the house. And that is my one and only. She is the peanut to my butter. She is the syrup to my pancakes. Y'all ain't hearing me. That's all right. She is my everything. I was, we were telling them about our story last night, and I remember the first time I saw her was about like the first time Adam saw Eve. I said, good God almighty, who is that? I said, I got to get to know her real quick. But uh, it's such a joy for my beautiful wife to be here. Thank you, honey, for always supporting me. Thank you. Mark chapter 10, beginning at verse 46. We will be reading through the remainder of the chapter through verse 52. And the Bible says, And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side, begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, mm -hmm, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you can't shut me up. And I like his response. The Bible says, but he cried the more aloud. Mm. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still mm -hmm. and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And if you highlight, underline, circle, I want you to put a star or something by verse 50. That's where we're going to focus on this morning. And he casting away his garment. Mm -hmm. Rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Well, if you can't shout over that, your shouters broke this morning. And immediately, somebody say immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. For a few moments this morning, I want to deal with this thought. Lay down your garments. We're going to go somewhere, I promise you. Lay down your garments. If you'll stretch forth your hand this way and pray for me as I pray for you. Father God, we come before you. Oh God, we have sensed your spirit. We have sensed your anointing. Father, I ask that you move in this place. God, permeate the atmosphere with your anointing. Open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings so strong that our mortal bodies cannot contain. God, I ask that you walk among us and talk among us. God, I ask that you bless. I ask that you heal. I ask that you deliver. I'm going to praise you like you've already done it, God. 
God, because your credit is good with us. You're great, and you're greatly to be praised. So, Father, I ask that you move like you've never moved before. Anoint these lips to speak, and anoint the ears to hear. And in all things, we will give you the glory and you the honor. For it is in the name that is above every name we pray, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And all God's children said, Amen. You may be seated this morning. Lay down your garments. There is an epidemic of cataclysmic proportions that is affecting the church as a whole today. This pandemic, this plague, this sickness, whatever vernacular you would like to use, is called hopelessness. So many of the people in our churches wake up every day with a sense of hopelessness. They feel like it's hopeless to come to church. Hopeless to read your word. Hopeless to praise God. Hopeless to pray. The enemy has told you in your ear that you are wasting your time. You're wasting your time coming to church. You're wasting your time praising God. If he was going to do it, he'd have done it already. You are wasting your time. And so many of us have walked in here with hopelessness. Oh, I know you've got the mask on. I know you've got the facade going on this morning. But you cannot fool God. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. He knows exactly what you're dealing with. But what shocks me and what amazes me is that church folk are surprised when we go through trials. We're surprised when we go through tests. It comes as a shock to us that we have to walk through a storm. We come in here Sunday after Sunday and say, Pastor, the devil's been on me all week. He's fought me every step I took. And we act like we're supposed to be surprised at that. What do you think he's going to do? Give you a back rub and send you to Hawaii for a week? It don't work like that. The Bible says he is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. John 10 and 10 says that the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come that you might have life. Come on, help me shout already. And you might have life more abundantly. You see, Jesus Christ did not come to die on an old rugged cross that you can walk around here broke, busted, and disgusted. He did not die that you can walk around here bound in chains. I come to remind somebody that you are a child of God. You are anointed. You are saved, sanctified, and filled with the walking, talking Holy Ghost and with fire. If God be for me, who can be against me? I've come to tell somebody, don't you be afraid of the problem. Don't you be scared of the storm. I serve a God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can think or ask. There is nothing too hard for my God to do. He's able to heal. He's able to bless. He's able to deliver. My God, help me preach somebody. God is able to change your life. But still, people walk in here hopeless. You have believed the report of the enemy. You have believed the lie that the enemy has sold you. May I remind you that the devil is a liar. Let me say that again. The devil is a liar, and he's the father of all lies. And I've come to rebuke that devil back to hell. It doesn't matter what he says. It matters what God says because God has the final word. And let me tell you what God says. God says you are blessed. You're blessed in your rising, and you're blessed in your falling. You're blessed in your going, and you're blessed in your coming. You're blessed in the city, and you're blessed in the field. You're blessed in your house. You're blessed at your job. My God Almighty, you are blessed. I said you're blessed. You are blessed. I've come to remind you that as long as God is still on the throne, 
there is hope. And he's always going to be on the throne because he is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the ending. He is the first and the last. He knows your ending from your beginning. I have come to remind you that he is God and he's God all by himself. He's God on the platform and he's God back at the door. He's God in the amen corner and he's God all over the floor. He's God when the lightning flashes. He's God when the thunder rolls. He's God way up in heaven and it's God down in my soul. God is God and he always will be God. He's God in the morning. He's God at night. He's God on the mountain and he's God in the valley. He's God in the storm and he's God in the sunshine. He's God in the rain and he's God in the valley. He is God and he's God all by himself. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. He's God and he always will be God. Hey, help me praise the Lord, somebody. But it's like we come in here and we forget who it is we serve. You don't serve a deadbeat statue in a back room somewhere. (laughs) <laughs> you serve the one uh, that stepped out on nothing and in six days created everything. Uh, you serve the one uh, that knows the number of stars uh, and calls them all by their name. Uh, you know the one uh, that split the Red Sea for Moses. Uh, he knocked down Jericho's walls for Joshua. He caused the sun to stand still for Joshua in time of battle. He provided manna in the wilderness. Uh, he provided a fire at night. Uh, he provided a cloud by day. Uh, and I've come to tell you, if God did it back then, God will do it again today. He's, whoo, I've come to tell you, he's God. He's God. He is God. But nevertheless, we come in here feeling hopeless. I wonder how many today have walked in here hopeless. The doctor gave you a bad report this week. It's hopeless. Your child's still strung out on dope. It's hopeless. Oh, I'm preaching better than you shouting now. Your husband or wife still running the roads with somebody. It's hopeless. Mm -hmm. You have walked in here believing all is hopeless. Which brings us to Mark chapter 10. The picture of hopelessness. A man born blind. All he had ever seen was darkness if we were to cut out all the lights right now and for us to close our eyes we would all get uncomfortable because we are not used to living in the dark but that's all this man had ever known was living in the dark all he had ever known was being blind and when you have a problem long enough you get used to it Preach on, preacher, I think I will. (laughs) When you get used to an issue, you get comfortable with it. (laughs) You sit down and say, well, it's never going to get better. I might as well get used to this problem. It's never going to get changed. I might as well deal with it. (laughs) Honey, that is a lie. (laughs) Ah, my God Almighty. (laughs) God did not call you to live in a spirit of fear. God gave you the power of love and a sound mind. (laughs) Ah. There is nothing that is going to be able to stop you as long as God is on your side. If God be for me, who can be against me? But that's easy to preach about, preacher. But you don't know what I'm going through. You're right, I don't. 
but God does. And let me go ahead and continue to pop that theological bubble you're in right now. You will never go through more than God did to get you. For the Bible says, for God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave up everything so that you could be saved and redeemed and bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't you let that little storm fret you. Don't you let that little trial. I'll wig you out. Honey, you're called by God. You're anointed by God. The God's good hand is upon you. God is for you and not against you. You are the head and not the tail. You are the first and not the last. You are a child of the most high God and king. He was blind. May I submit, now this is the second service, I'm going to take a little of my time if that's okay. What amazes me is that Bartimaeus is such a clear picture of the church. Bartimaeus was blind to the surroundings around him. The church has become blind to the things that are surrounding us. We're blind to the things of God. Mm -hmm. That's why you can go to some churches and not even be able to tell it's a church or not. Uh, I better get off that. It got quiet real soon. Uh, but you see, we become blind to the things of God, and we become open to the things of the world. Uh, let me just remind you, uh, if the church is a church, uh, somebody will be able to look and distinguish uh, that that's a church. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, I know we are living in a generation uh, where people stand behind a pulpit uh, and tell you you can live any way you want to, uh, but that's not what the Bible says. Uh, that's not what God says. Uh, you can't shack up with the devil and expect God to pay the rent. It don't work like that, honey. If you're going to claim to be a child of God, you better walk like him, talk like him, act like him. You better be sanctified from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. If you're going to claim to be a child of God, you've got to act like a child of God. Every day, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Every day, he dealt with this issue. Ah, but one day, look at your neighbor and say, one day. This day was just like any other day. He got up, put his clothes on, freshened up a little bit, put the little Old Spice on, because Old Spice is just that old. Put a little Old Spice on his neck so he'd smell a little good. And the Bible says that he went to the gate and he started begging. Oh, but he heard a commotion. There was something going on today. There was a big old crowd coming around. And the Bible says that he asked around what's going on because he couldn't see. Sometimes you can't see when God's coming right to you, but I got to get off that. The Bible says that all the people around him started saying it's Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, you see, he heard that it was Jesus. Preach, Andrew Flippo. I'm doing the best I can. I've come to tell you he heard it was Jesus Christ. It wasn't just any old man. It wasn't just any prophet. It wasn't any preacher. This was the king of glory wrapped in mortal man's flesh. He knew that this Jesus Christ made the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the dead to live again. There was nothing that this Jesus could not do. He had done many miracles and the Bible says he knew that if he did it for them, he can do it for me. I've come to international praise to tell you God don't care where you come from. He don't care what you look like. He don't care what you smell like. He loves you. He loves you and he's for you, and he wants to touch you, and he wants to bless your soul. He heard it was Jesus. Mm. Through all the commotion, through all the noise, one thing stuck out. Jesus was coming that day. 
Jesus is coming. Do you get up on Sundays like that? Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Ah, Jesus is coming. Ah, this man knew. He had heard all the reports about what he had done. He knew, he knew that he had walked on water. He knew that he had called the seas and the waves. He knew that he had raised Lazarus from the dead. He knew that he had healed ten lepers. He knew that he had stopped a funeral in procession in Luke chapter 7 and tapped the coffin and the boy got back up. He knew that in Luke chapter 8 there was a woman who had bled for 12 years but had enough faith in her that she crawled on her belly like a dog and said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. He knew that he had changed people's lives because when you come into contact with Jesus, you will leave better than when you came in. You cannot come into his presence and not be changed, not be delivered, not be set free. He is my deliverer. He is my healer. He is my provider. He is my all in all. He is my faith. He is my hope. He is my joy. He is my shield. He is my horn. He is my buckler. He is my God. He is my king. He's my all in all. Oh, he's everything I will. Woo! He heard it was Jesus, and he made a conscious choice. And that's what you're going to have to do this morning. You're going to have to make a choice. Am I going to continue to deal with this? Or am I going to walk in the freedom God promised me? Because who the Son set free is free indeed. I wish all the free people would just shout a little bit. Anybody free in here? Hey! Anybody free in here? He made a choice. He stirred up the faith that was on the inside of him. Because when your faith connects to God's power, with men, it is impossible. But with God, all things. I wish you'd shout all things. All things are possible to them that believe. Oh, I got to hurry. But listen, listen to what he does. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. On me. Now, to our knowledge, mercy was not his problem. Blindness was his problem. But the first thing he asked for was not for his sight. He asked for what he really needed. Because sometimes we, thank you, Holy Ghost, sometimes we let our wants get in the way of our needs. Ah, that's good preaching right there. Uh, and the Bible said, he said, have mercy on me. Maybe the reason you haven't got what you've been praying for is you've been praying for the wrong thing the whole time. It's time to lay down what you want. It's time to lay down what pleases you and say, God, not my will, but thy will be done. It ain't about you honey it ain't about your grandmama it ain't about your granddaddy it's about God it's about his glory it's about his honor it's all about the Lord now now the good sanctified church folk looked at him and said shh 
He ain't got time for you. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble, but that's all right. <laughs> the good church folks said, you're not on the order of service. The good sanctified church crowd said, uh, uh, you're sitting in my pew. All because he didn't look like them. He didn't talk like them. He didn't smell. Yeah, yeah, he didn't smell like him. He didn't walk like them. Let me tell you something. I know that you all cute this morning in your ugly sweater. I know everything's all prim and proper. But let me tell you something. We're all jacked up. We're all messed up. We're all sinners saved by the grace of God. So if you get your egotistical hat off and realize that had it not been for the Lord that was on your side, I, when I think, of the goodness of Jesus and all that is done for me. My soul cries. Hey! But I love, I love his response. The King James vernacular says they cried the more loud. In Flippo translation, he hollered. He hollered. Because when you've got a problem, you don't care what people think about you. When you got an issue, you don't care what the deacons have to say about you. I wish I had some real folk in this place. When you got a, my God, I feel a Holy Ghost. When you got a problem, you don't care what people are going to say. My praise is not predicated on your opinion. My praise is predicated on the fact I was on my way to hell, but God snatched me out and turned my life around and set my feet. Oh, solid rock, my God. Hey, he parlored to the Lord. Woo! <clears throat> mm. Y'all go ahead and have a seat. I'm getting there. I ain't there yet. You see, he had an issue, and he was going to do whatever he could. Because when people become desperate, desperate people do desperate things. And if you let some desperation get back into your life, you wouldn't come in here and sit like a bump on a log every Sunday. Ah, yeah, yeah, I'm going there too, honey. Just buckle up and get ready for the ride. You see, the Bible says that he hollered. He was willing to praise God even in the face of his adversity. He was willing to praise God even in the face of the storm. It doesn't impress God that you can shout on the mountaintop. What impresses God is when all hail is crashing in on you and you say, though he slay me yet, will I trust in him? The Lord giveth and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <clears throat> he did not care that people didn't understand his praise. Everybody's praise is different. And until you walk in the shoes of somebody else, how dare you look down your sanctified nose? Hmm. He was willing to praise God 
And my question this morning, uh, my question this morning is where is your shout gone? Where has your praise ye the Lord gone? Where has your glory to God gone? But you know the crown. They come in here and if you don't sing their right style. If you don't sing their right music. They'll sit there with their arms crossed. Look like they drank some prune juice. And that, honey, is the reason God hadn't blessed you in 30 years. <laughs> because you're waiting on somebody to sing the right song. <laughs> Let me tell you, I was so my way to hell. I'll praise God in any kind of music. <laughs> as soon as you say the name Jesus, <laughs> something on the inside of me begins to stir in my soul. I can praise him in Spanish. <laughs> I can praise him in hillbilly. I can praise him in any kind of language. <laughs> because God is God of everybody. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It is your bona fide right to praise God. The Pharisees asked Jesus, why do your disciples do that? Why do they have to praise and shout so loud? He said, because if they don't, the rocks will cry. God's been too good to me to let a pile of rocks shout in my place. He's been there when no one else has been there. He's done what no one else could do. When everybody else wrote me off, God was still there. God had his hand on me. The good hand of God is on your life. And God is still for you. But they tried to sit this man down. They tried to tell him, shh, it don't take all that. It takes all that and more. If people can shout their voice hoarse at a football game, I can shout my voice in the house of God. If you can go to a Carolina Gamecock football game and lose your mind and come to the house of God and sit like a bump on a log, there's a problem with your praise. There's a problem with your shout when you can shout in the world and not shout in the church. Oh, it was God on your side. He hollered, he shouted. Shouting is indicative of victory. Because all through the Old Testament, when two armies would fight, the winning army would shout the shout of victory. You got to shout the shout of victory. You got to black the devil's eye every time he comes around you. The battle's already won. The battle's already over. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who first loved us. We are not going under. We are going up. We are going to win this thing. It's already been settled in the glory above. He hollered, he hollered, he hollered. He hollered. Sometimes you got to fight. Sometimes you've got to forget about what people say. Forget about what people do. He hollered. Look at your neighbor and say, I'll holler if I have to. <laughs> Look at your other neighbor and say, I'll holler if I have to. If I've got to dance over your pocketbook, if i got to step over your shoes, if i got to fling my arms around, you see real praisers got to get some room around them because real praisers don't care about anything. They're just trying to step into the presence and the glory of God. I can't have they praise ye the
Now, oh, I've got to hurry. The, the, the Bible... The Bible says that he didn't get his attention until he hollered. Why? Because God inhabits the praises. The word inhabit is literally translated from the Hebrew means to live and dwell in. So if you want God to live in a weak and wimpy praise, be my guest. But I want God to live in a ferocious. I want God to come in with the sirens blaring, kicking open the door and say, help is here. I want God to live in a mighty praise. And the Bible says when he hollered, Jesus stood still. In a crowd of, I'm sure, hundreds, one cry caused Jesus to stand still. <laughs> Ah, sometimes God wants to know how bad do you really want it? How bad are you willing to fight for it? How bad are you willing to shout for it? How bad do you really want it? And Jesus stood still. And then the Bible says he called for him. Now he had waited a long time for this. And some of you have waited a long time for this. Ah, but the day finally came. Today was the day of his salvation. That's why I've come to tell somebody, don't you weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap what you sow. He may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. Lazarus may have been dead four days, but he walked to the tomb and said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came leaping out the grave. He's always on time now what struck me in this story is what took place in verse 50 the Bible says If it wasn't important, God would never have had to stop the story. You see, this man had a beggar's garment from a life of defeat. It was battered, it was torn. It was beat up. It was ripped. It stunk. It had stains. Because all his life, all he had known was blindness. He was defined by his garment. Every time they saw the garment, they didn't have to see who it was. They knew who it was. He let the world define him. By his situation. And he had come to accept his present circumstance as his future. And that's what's happened to some of you. You've let the world's label about you overshadow your life. 
All he owned was a beggar's garment. My God, I feel him. All he had in his possession was a garment that defined him. And my question to you this morning is how much longer are you going to let your garment define you? How much longer are you going to let your present circumstance define you? You are not what this world has labeled you. Just because your daddy was a drunk don't mean you got to be a drunk. Just because your mama ran the roads don't mean you got to run the roads. Don't let this world label you what God has rebuked out of you. Don't you let this world try to put on you what God has taken off of you because you are not who you used to be. You are not who you used to be. You are a new creation. You are a new creature. The old has died and the new has been raised to life again. But Bartimaeus knew. He, he said, I, I can't come to him like this. Because when I go to him, I'll leave changed. But when you've had something for so long, it's hard to let it go. When you've held on to bitterness for 20 years, it's hard to let that go, preacher. When I've walked with this thing for so long, I've just accepted it. I've tried to doll it up. I've tried to do things about it. He threw off his garment. Because when you come to him, whatever is hindering you has got to come off. He got to shake it out of my good God Almighty. I feel like preaching. Let me give you some good Disney theology. Let it go. Quit holding on to it. Let it go. It's in the past. You can't fix it. You can't change it. Quit living from where you came and start living where God wants you to go. Quit living behind you and start focusing on what What's in front of you? He called for him. Ooh. And I'm sure the chills ran up and down Bartimaeus' spine because he said, my God, I've waited a long time for this. I may have woke up a blind man, but today I'm no longer a blind man. I may have woke up a crack addict, but today I'm no longer defined by my addiction. I wish somebody helped me preach. I may have woke up a drunk, but I'm free by the power of God. I may have woke up, I may have woke up doing things, I wasn't proud of, but today I am a new creation. Today, my God Almighty, I may have woke up with the label on me, but today he threw off his garment and ran to Jesus. I ran. The Bible said he ran. I've come to tell you, when you lay it down and when you run, he will change your life. Stay with me all over this place. I'm about to land this thing. Sometimes when God calls you, the things that have gotten you to this point cannot get you any further. Sometimes you have got to lay it down. Sometimes you got to let go of some friends that you need to let go. Sometimes you got to wave bye to a few people because where you're going, they cannot follow. My 
God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Ah, he threw the thing that had defined him. And the Bible said he, he ran. I don't know how a blind man runs. But the Bible said he ran to Jesus. And Jesus asked him, what is it you want me to do? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And the Bible said Jesus looked at him in eyes that had glazed over. No pupils, I'm sure. Looked at that which people would have called dead. Never let the enemy put a period where God wants to put a comma. And the Bible said, he looked at him, and he said, be of good cheer. Thy faith hath made thee whole. <laughs> ah. And uh, immediately, somebody say immediately. Oh, say it like you mean it immediately. <laughs> He received his sight because when God touches you, there ain't a doubt in your mind. When God touches you, he don't need a second opinion. He don't need some professional's advice. When God touches you, there ain't a doubt in your enemy's minds that God has changed your life. And the last thing. The Bible said he followed Jesus in the way. He followed Jesus. Because so many of us are quick to run to him when we have a problem. But as soon as God touches it, we run back. We want to treat him like Santa Claus and put him on the shelf until next year. The Bible said he followed him. Every step Jesus took, he took with him. Every corner he turned, he turned with him. Every path he went, he went with him. Because when he touches you, you don't ever want to leave him. Because if he touched you once, he'll touch you again. And if he touches you again, he'll touch you once more. That's why I want to stay as close to him as I can. Because every now and then I wake up needing a touch. Every now and then I wake up needing a deliverance. And I know if I'm following him, all I got to do is call on the name of the Lord. And I shall be saved. Singers, if you want to come on. I got to quit. I'll preach all day. God is tired of the church walking around defeated. He is tired of us walking around here with hopelessness. Don't you know this is God's church and God's church cannot fail? He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I've come to International Praise Church of God to tell somebody today. The same Jesus that touched Bartimaeus is in this place right now. And the same power that flowed into Bartimaeus' eyes is the same power that will flow in you today. He hasn't changed. He hasn't wavered. His power has not gone down. His glory has not diminished. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession for his saints. He's here to touch you today, but my question is, 
How much longer are you going to deal with that problem? I've talked to you as soon as I started screaming. You knew I was talking right at you. My question today is, aren't you ready for God to change your life? Every head bowed, every eye closed. My God, oh my God, my God, my God. You've walked in here needing a literal miracle in your life. A miracle in your body. A miracle in your family or home life. Or you just need God to touch you this morning. Don't you leave here not receiving what God has for you. Don't you leave here with the same garments you walked in here with. All you've got to do is lay them down and run to him. And he'll open his arms wide and receive you into his fold. So on the count of three, I'm just going to be plain and simple. And whoever comes down here, we're going to pray. Believing. On the count of three, one, you need a touch in your life. You need a touch in your body. You need a touch in your family. You know you need a miracle in your house. If that's you, one, I want you to come. Now, what are you even waiting on? What do you even have to think about? We got plenty of room. Just make a line down here across the front. We got plenty of room. What are you even thinking about it for? God knows what you need. You know you need a touch from him today. You know, my God, they're coming from everywhere. Two, aren't you ready to receive what God has for you? Aren't you ready? to receive what God has for you. Three, if that's you, I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to come. Find you a place somewhere. I'm going to try to get to as many as I can. Find you a place somewhere. Altar workers, prayer warriors, I need your help. I need your help. Just find somebody, lay hands on them, and let's start to pray. Let's start to pray now. Father, you thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for You sacrificed your life So I can be free So I can be whole and I will tell everyone I you, thought I, you thought I was worth saving Yes, you did, Lord So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping Clean me up there. So you clean me up inside You thought I was to die for You sacrificed your life so I can be free, so I can be home, and I will tell everyone I know. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, glory to the God that changed my life. So I can be whole and I will tell everyone. 
You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. You, you sacrificed your life so I could be free, so I can be whole. And I will tell everyone I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Can we all just raise our hands and just worship the Lord in this place? Oh, come on. Let's just worship the Lord. Worship the Lord this morning. God is in this place. People's lives are being changed. People's lives are being changed. People's situations are getting brought back together. That what the enemy tried to destroy, God has restored. And God has fixed. Let no man separate what God has put together. Oh, God, we're claiming the victories. We're claiming the breakthroughs. We're claiming the deliverances. You are a good God. You are a mighty God. You are great and greatly to be praised. We will glorify your name. We will shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Let all the people rejoice. I say again, let all the people rejoice. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because, because I am free, because I am whole, and I will tell everyone I know. Yes, you clean me up inside. So I can be free, so I can be home, and I will tell everyone you thought I, you thought I was worth saving. Oh, so you came. You came and changed my life. Oh, you thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. You sacrifice your life so I can be free, so I can be whole. And I will tell everyone I
Hallelujah. Isn't God great? What what so what so fascinates me about this story is that a lifetime of ailment was cured in an instant. I mean, just with the snap of a finger was cured. That's what happened this morning in these altars. Bondages, ailments, battles were won in this altar this morning. Oh, come on. We're talking about people's freedom in here. We can shout a little better than that. What you've got to realize, before I hand the microphone back to the bishop, what you've got to realize is that Bartimaeus never let his tragedy dictate his theology. Amen. He never let the greatness of the storm deter him from his focus on Jesus. And that's the way you've got to do. You can never let your tragedy change your theology on God. Because if God has been faithful to this point, God is going to be faithful the rest of the way. Now, do you love the Lord this morning? I wish you'd show God. Come on, if he's done something for you, shout it out right now. Just let the Lord know you praise him. You thank him for what he's done. Hallelujah. Amen. What an awesome word, right? Amen. Awesome word. Bishop Flippo, awesome. Amen. I, I sent it to Facebook. I said, there's hope for this generation. Amen. Hashtag Jeremiah generation. Amen. Awesome preaching. Amen. If he's doing that at 28, I want to see what he's doing at 50. Amen. Amen. Keep it up, buddy. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. God use you in a mighty way. There's no doubt in my mind there's a lot of things that happen around this altar. Amen. People were delivered. Some were set free. Some changed their garments. And they're not leaving here with the same garments that they came on, came in with. Amen. Amen. Listen, we pray you have a great rest of the day. Amen. Don't forget Wednesday night, midweek service. Next Sunday, two services, our Christmas service, if you will. And uh, don't forget on the 30th, we have one service at 1030. Pastor Chris and his team will be handling that service. Amen. So God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Come back. If you're our guest, we'd love to meet with you in a hospitality room. Just real quick. Let me say this real quick. On um, December is a, I, I was an evangelist for almost five years. December is a slow month for evangelists. And that's because you're having um, Christmas parties and things are winding down, getting ready for the new year. And so listen, if you'd like to sow a seed, and if you want to Put it through the church, if you will, or if you just want to walk up and shake their hand and put whatever the Lord lays in your, on your heart, amen, in their hand, do that. Bless the evangelist on his way out, if you will, amen, as the Lord leads you. But if you want to run it through the church, 
Amen. We'll count it tomorrow, and we'll get it to them. Amen. All right. All oh, minds, hearts, and souls clear. There's one other thing. Oh yes. If you would, uh, if you don't mind, just kind of to celebrate the day for those of you who had um, an ugly sweater on. If you would uh, go by our hospitality room at the step and re repeat. If you don't know what that is, that's that white thing with our logo and the Church of God logo on there. And uh, let uh, Brother Jason knew he's going to take your picture and put it on social media just to celebrate uh, the day. But if you're our guest, we'd love to meet with you in a hospitality room and immediately following the service. All minds, hearts, and souls clear. God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Come back. We'll see you Wednesday night. The Lord willing, the rapture doesn't take place. If it does, we'll see you on the other side. Forever, forever, forever. Because I am, because I am free, because I am whole. And I will tell everyone I you thought I, you thought I was worth saving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Clean me up inside. You clean me up inside. You thought I was to die for. You sacrificed your life so I can be free, so I can be whole. And I will tell everyone.